As far as I can remember, it was just like any other day, except the fact that both my parents were home because my mother worked, my daddy worked, and my grandmother worked. And well, I went to, was at school. But this particular morning, everybody was home. I grew up in a very close community neighborhood. Family members lived within maybe six, five, the most 10 blocks within one another. I was told that I would be leaving Hardin and going to school that was three blocks away from my house, which Hardin was 12 blocks away. But that morning, my mother always put my clothes out Got ready, and, uh, and the marshals came. And um, my daddy got together, and my mother told uh, the marshal when they came to, to get us, and she told him, she said, you know, she said, this is my baby, and I'm putting her in your hands. And he said, you know, miss, he said, this is my job. And I'm going to do my job. I'm going to take care of your baby. You don't have to worry about it. And so that morning when we left, we um, got in the car and we drove to a, a street behind the school. When we pulled up, to the corner of Garden and St. Claude, there was this crowd. And I looked and the only thing I could associate this with was Mardi Gras because there was a parade that came from St. Bernard Parish that passed right past McDonald 19. We got there, we got out the car and my daddy said, give me your hand. He said, I'm here. He said, look straight ahead. We're going we to walk up those steps. So we walked and approaching the steps, I could hear the crowd. I couldn't see faces because, you know, it was a little girl on, on the ground. And we are escorted up the stairs to enter the school. All you could hear is boo, two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Boo, boo. We heard this cheering and cheering and cheering. And I was like, well, you could hear boos, but you heard cheers. It was a crowd of black people who lived in the neighborhood, who lived in the community who were there, which we didn't see. All we saw was the white crowd. We didn't see the black crowd, but we heard them. Once we entered the school, we're told to have a seat in the uh, hallway outside the principal's office, my daddy and I. And uh, it seemed like we were there forever. Eventually, I was taken to classroom. All of a sudden, you just saw Little kids disappearing. Parents just snatching kids. They're coming through the courtroom and just taking kids out of class. And after a while, it was Leona, Gail, and myself, and the teacher, Ms. Maya. From that day until the next year, we were the only kids in the school. We were there for first grade and second grade. And then third grade, we went to T.J. Sims, which was still in the lower ninth ward, but in a predominantly and probably all white neighborhood. Went to Sims, we expected the same thing. That was at McDonald, you know. But these kids came to school with 
things that have been taught to them and embedded in them. And they came with some serious, serious things that we had no idea. We did not expect at all. And it was terrible. It was a terrible, terrible time. My daddy explained to me that they had made this promise that they were going to give three, three years elementary school and not realizing, I'm pretty sure, how bad it was going to be, that sixth grade. And he said, I told my daddy, I don't, I don't want to be, I had had enough. And he said, well, okay then, then you don't have to do it anymore. And I was like a bird set out of a cage. This pin is from the U.S. Marshals, and it's uh, Gail Leone and I were made, and Ruby, were made honorary Marshals. This was for the 50th, 50th anniversary. We met three of the Marshals. They set up a, a dinner that Friday night with the marshals and their their wives and us, and the marshals were already there. The first one I recognized was Al Butler. I asked him, I said, well, how, how was it when you had to go back to your neighborhood? He said, well, you, you know, you had some problems, but he, he said he never let his children forget because he had little kids. And he said that there was no way in the world somebody was going to say his kids couldn't go to school or go to wherever. For young people today, I want them to know that respect is important. If you don't have respect for yourself, for anybody, for anything, there's nothing that you can, you can, you can attain, especially you have the opportunity in this country to do and be whatever no matter what, take advantage of the opportunity.